Hey everyone, Monday.com is an interesting cloud services company that's down significantly off its high. In fact, it's down more than 57% off its peak valuation. In this video, I'll consider Monday.com, evaluate some critical financial metrics, compare it against its valuation, and answer if the stock is a buy, hold, or a sell. So let's jump right into the analysis. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so I mentioned the stock is down 57% off the high. The stock price collapse started after 2021, but after falling in 2022, it's performed relatively well rising from the bottoms as the company has demonstrated excellent growth along the lines of revenue, profit, and cash flow. Now, speaking of revenue growth, the company over the trailing 12-month period generated $729 million in revenue. That's up from less than $200 million in revenue in January of 2021. Now, when you're looking forward, the Wall Street analysts that are following Monday.com, they expect the company to deliver 28% revenue growth in 2024 and then another 27% revenue growth in 2025. The company has consistently performed at the north 25% revenue growth range over the last several years. And analysts that are following the stock expect that growth to continue as the company has launched a few AI infused products that's making their service more attractive. And also remember in late 2022, there was a significant slowdown in spending on the cloud. Businesses worldwide looked at areas where they could cut spending and cloud services was one area where they cut spending as they were fearing an oncoming recession. But ever since then, ever since the slowdown in late 2022 and early 2023, businesses have ramped up spending again. They're not spending as much as they were before on cloud services. Most of their budgets, it's going towards artificial intelligence. Most of their incremental budget increase is going to AI. But cloud services is gaining traction again. At least the decreases in spending have stopped and businesses have looked to return to growth in this area. Now, one of the things I like about Monday.com is while it's still losing money on the bottom line, it's demonstrating efficient growth. You could see it's operating profit margin here in a trailing 12 month period, negative 5.29% in the most recent period. But you could see how that's improved from close to negative 100% in January of 2021. They've made consistent progress towards profitability. As I often say, I don't mind if a company is losing money, if they demonstrate to me that their growth is leading to profitability. Incremental revenue growth is making the business more profitable, lessening the losses on the bottom line. That's what I see here from Monday.com over the last several years. I like to see this from companies. Now, if you look at cash flow from operations from Monday.com, you see a similar upward trend, but on top of that, you see a strong positive number at 29.52%. That's up from negative 22% in 2021. You might ask, how does a company generate positive cash flow from operations, but generates losses on the bottom line in net income? That's a result of non-cash expenses, things like stock-based compensation, when a company pays its employees in stock options or stock grants, it needs to account for that on the income statement as an expense. But from cash flow from operations, that's not a that's not a negative in there because that's not cash leaving the company. That's a stock option or a stock grant leaving the company. Now, the impact is that it could dilute shareholders, but it doesn't have cash leaving the company. And this makes companies self-sustaining self-funding and it allows them better risk versus reward profiles because they don't need to go to investors and ask for more money because they can sustain themselves they don't need to go and get money from investors and so they could dilute shareholders yes that's true but i think it's less risky in this fashion because then they can fund themselves and they don't need to get money from investors and 29.52 percent is an excellent metric in terms of cash flow from operations to sales. Monday.com's balance sheet is absolutely pristine. 
1.116 billion in cash and short-term investments with zero long-term debt zero long-term debt and what this means is the company can use this cash invest in short-term government bonds and this cash can generate roughly 50 million in annual interest income 55 million if they get you know five five and a quarter percent in short-term government bonds which is the prevailing interest rate they can also use this cash to fund growth if they see new project areas they can invest in to fund growth opportunities or if they work with customers to offer better terms they can tell their customers hey sign a deal with us we can give you attractive terms if you're short on cash we'll be willing to finance this sale you don't have to pay us back until nine months later or six months later we don't need the cash we have a strong balance sheet we need the business we want to get the business and so we'll offer you better terms and so this gives them an advantage versus other businesses that may not have this type of balance sheet where they cannot offer those terms where they have to go to customers and say we need the cash up front or we need the cash within a week after we implement this service so it is a competitive advantage especially nowadays as the cost of capital has increased by nearly 500 basis points. It's more of an advantage today versus two years ago. And the longer the cost of capital remains higher, the more of an advantage this becomes because competitors will find it more challenging to find cash from investors. So this is a critical, critical advantage for Monday.com and a pristine balance sheet is more desired nowadays versus two years ago when interest rates were nearly zero. And the last thing I wanted to look at is Monday.com's valuation. It's trading at a price to free cash flow of 45.69, which is roughly where this stock has traded for, according to this metric, going back to October of 2023. It's fluctuated around this valuation. So considering its prospects, solid, you know, near 30% revenue growth, expanding operating profit margin, expanding cash flow from operations, a pristine balance sheet in an industry that's growing. I like its prospects. The valuation is just about fairly valued given its prospects, given everything else. It's right there, right on the borderline of where I would recommend the stock as a buy, but it's right there on the borderline. It's not like a screaming buy where I would say, man, at this valuation, I would, you know, buy this stock hand over fist. But at this valuation, this feels like an excellent risk versus reward for investors. It's right there, right on the cusp of being a buy. If the, if the valuation was to drop 10%, it would be an even more attractive valuation. So for those of you that are looking for a larger margin of safety, you can wait for the stock. You can hope for a dip of 5 to 10% to get in. For those of you that don't mind paying a fair price for a good business, then it's an attractive purchase at current valuations, in my opinion. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.